Well, hello again from Kingston. As you can tell behind me, there's been a great deal of paving achieved this week, including the first half of the whole span of the bridge. So uh, let's get right into the update. And don't forget, if you have comments or suggestions, or you just want to subscribe, check the description below and make sure you follow along all the updates. The days are getting shorter, and so is the time remaining for the construction. Take care, I'll see you at the end. Bye for now. Monday proved to be a very wet day on site. But that was no deterrent to Coco Paving, who put in a full day's work on the multi-use pathway on the west end of the bridge. Wet conditions on the east end had no impact on operations by bar to complete the work around manholes on Gore Road. And the weather had absolutely no effect on vehicles arriving either to move waste or to collect piles. Similarly, efforts to remove the crane mats from the trestle continued. For the dedicated soles pressure washing Pier 17, a little bit of rain made no difference at all. Nearby, efforts to remove the gravel from below the surface as well as the top of the causeway began. Tuesday saw more paving work conducted on the West End. Over on the trestle, the delivery of a cutting set to the floating mats signalled the end for two of the piles. Each in turn would be withdrawn, swung around by the crane and laid down for removal. Just above, around Pier 20, a crew from AMG Metals was installing railings. The Black Rose Company were making good progress towards span 12 with the waterproofing material that will seal the surface of the vehicle lanes for asphalt to be laid. In what proved to be signs of imminent departure, staff from the cleanup shop were busy pressure washing the Gamaco machine. Work to remove the temporary safety rails and walkways from span 18 using the bridge buggies continued. Wednesday saw the anticipated departure of the three sections of the Gamaco machine. Clearing the pathway for the forthcoming open day on Saturday, the bridge buddies were removed and placed, temporarily, on Gore Road. On the west end, a significant effort went into paving the approach to the bridge on the west side. This was the final top coat. Coco Paving could reasonably claim most valuable player this week. They moved pretty quickly on Thursday into paving the first 12 spans of the bridge itself on the west side. It hardly needs saying that the effort involved a substantial number of asphalt delivery trucks. On the east side, in another major move, the last CBM ready mix truck backed down to deliver concrete to another section of the dividing wall. Friday saw a lot more asphalt arrive, serving two paving machines, working in parallel to lay the second top coat on the first 12 spans. Over a long and very successful working day, the crew from Coco would go on to pave the ring road on the west end. Back on the east end, 
it was noted that gravel was being removed from the roadway behind the trestle. And it was going to build up the back of the nearby holding pond. Sousa's capable crew were up on Gore Road making good some of the curbs that had been damaged or required refurbishment on Gore Road. We'll go to wildlife this week with a reminder that there's still one trestle span remaining to be removed. I have to confess at this point that commitments today prevented me from making a conclusion to this video. So I'll leave you with a look at the whole bridge during the open day and wish you well until next week. Thanks for watching. <laughs>